Yes. May I request everybody to look at the larger picture and what is going to happen to the country? Because I myself still have a question after your speech, sir, which is, what is the way forward? Way forward, we just move forward. <laughs> no, it is, it has taken so many years to get into this rot. I can guarantee you it's not going to be easy. The way forward is to mentally decide that we want to move forward. If you decide that you want to move forward, then the way forward will come for sure. Everybody is busy fighting their daily life. There are too many problems of life. Life is getting complicated. They don't have time. Democracy is not the easiest way of governance. It is one of the best, but not the easiest. Unless and until there is participation of the people. The Anna Hazare type of movement, I'm not talking about that particular movement, it has to be not once in a while. It has to be a continuous effort. And I tell you, the time has come where few of us have to sit down like we had the constituent assembly debate we have to create our own constituent assembly and find out are we relevant or we are just relevant once in five years when i say i i am also considering myself first a citizen then a member of parliament and i think that we have become as citizens totally irrelevant because the entire machinery please believe me the entire machinery is only working for the government of the day. There is a sense of a career, a profession and power. There is no difference, please understand, when I read the Constituent Assembly debate, I feel they are talking about what's happening today. They are not talking about the British Raj. And that is where we are. It took the movement many, many years. And I can foresee it's going to take quite a few years. But the advantage with us today is we are connected. Almost 900 million people are connected today with cell phone, with any, some means of communication. So tasks would be much more easier. As long as we are positive about it, as long as we are democratic about it, as long as we are peaceful about it, I'm sure we can achieve. But is going to take a long time. So, the short answer is mentally you make up your mind that yes, we want to do it. I have been hearing the speeches in parliament and we see that some of the speeches are so good and so well uh, articulated. And then we at one side we look at 162 people with criminal backgrounds and criminal charges against them. So, the point that I am trying to make is, I am sure parliament is a mixed bag as, it, as everything is, but the rest of the people, the good people that I see are all deaf, dumb and mute. You seem to be one of the few people who has had the guts and the daring to come out. Are there more people like this in our country in parliament? I, I, think, I think there are people, but what has happened, unfortunately, like I said, that politics has become now, if I use such words, you know, if the media is there, it will be a breaking story. It will attribute to Mamta Banerjee. <laughs> and that fear is always there. But I'm not really, please understand, I'm not talking about any individual. That is not my style. But generally speaking, it is all become feudal. And we only understand and salute because leader does no wrong. And we all swear by the leader as long as the leader can give us the daily bread. The moment the leader doesn't have the capacity of giving us the vote, the leader becomes bad. So all of them are in that dhacha. I think we need to change this whip system. If there is a debate, we should be free to talk our minds. Otherwise, why do you have a parliament? Why do you have a debate at all? 
You say that this is the numbers, these are the numbers and that's all. You can be at home and then vote from your home. No debate required. I think the answer to that is if you have taken politics as your business, as your career, then you don't want to give up the job. If you have taken politics to come and truly serve the people, then your thinking is very different. And at the end of the day, let me tell you, this is a package deal. How you have been brought about by your parents, what are your value systems, what kind of environment you have got. So it's, it's all a package thing. But given the environment, I'm sure there are too many people to follow. All they are looking at is what is happening, what is going to happen to Dinesh Trivedi. So I have become some kind of a research material. <laughs> if he is successful, if people are with him, then they all will tag along. But I can tell you, each and every member of parliament, including from Trinamool Congress, they came and sort of said that you have done good to the country, we are very proud of it, that after a long time, and this is exactly most of the MPs says, that after a long time, you see a politician in the front page, not for the wrong reasons. One final point, looking at the treatment that was given to you, can we safely say that democracy of the people, by the people, for the people has become of, by and for the high command? You really want an answer? I think you know it. <laughs> Everybody knows it. And, and I myself have said that somewhere down the line, we have become too timid. We have become too scared. I don't know, we are scared of what? What will happen? When, you know, we cannot forget our history. During the British Raj, I mean, they got lattes, the women came out, but they had a program. So if you have a program, I'm sure no police, no bureaucracy, nobody dare touch you. People still ask me, unfortunately, that I hope you are okay. I hope people don't beat you up. And this is what is very, very sad. And there were a lot of well-wisher, he said, who are not from Bengal. He said, for a few days you don't go to Bengal. <laughs> they are well-wisher. But I can tell you, the people of Bengal, they love me. And it's amazing response I have. So you do your work. It is not us versus them or us against them. We are all together in this. Only thing we require a course correction. And power has to be handled as custodian. So I guess uh, the experiment will prove to be proper and we are on the right track. With your experience in the central cabinet and various appointments, do you think it is possible to run a public sector company profitably and in a professional manner without too much interference from the political class? As of today? As of today, sir. Even, even Air India, sir, which is a Ratna company, now it's, it's broke and there is a proposal to give a large capital dose to it. The answer is in front of you. I tried to do that and you saw the result. Answer is no. There is far too much interference from the political system and to be fair to the bureaucracy also, there is far too much of, they are afraid of CAG, CBI, so nobody wants to take a decision. That is also on one side of thing. So what is the answer? Answer is technology. Make everything computer oriented. And I was trying to do it in the railways. I said, why should the files move from one table to another? It should be on a computer monitor. And it should be a public property. As long as you do not have full transparency, I think this problem will remain. And interference by uh, the political system is tremendous. If there was no interference, tell me one thing. What is the budget after all? It's a proposal, right? It is not ten commandments I had presented on the floor of parliament. I had presented a proposal. And if you wanted to even roll back, it was the property of the house. 
and the house would have debated and said this is right this is not right that is what is the purpose of a budget purpose of a budget is not oh you presented you go what will you do everybody will start going one by one it's not the way to do it it is i have not been humiliated it's democracy which has been humiliated it is parliament which has been humiliated and i dare say i was not on trial there was a program of india today conclave i said i am not on trial is the prime minister of india who's on trial and that exactly what happened i knew my fundamentals too well that the party has put me there i have to obey the party thing and that's that's as simple as that but this is just not the way i'm just going to read out some questions that people have asked Kalal, she said, "Do you think you should have stayed in the system and gathered like-minded people to make a difference?" Should Somebody I... else has asked, without a name, that what would have happened if you had just refused to resign? What if you had stuck on? Government would have fallen, for sure. Because uh, first of all, I would not have done that. I mean, I never had that thought that I should stick around. because there are certain principles you observe and you follow and my principle was very clear that it was my party who had nominated me and my party did not want me so i should go only thing i was waiting for a direct communication from my leader that was the understanding with her but theoretically if i had not resigned i had a definite communication from the prime minister that he will not sack me the congress party also would not have sacked me because i had a communication so the call was left on me if i would have stuck there would have been a withdrawal of support for sure and there could have been a general election what i would have done as a prime minister of india that's a different story Somebody has a question which says, without the help of Vibhishan, Vibish, uh, it would have been impossible to beat Ravan. We see Vibhishan in you. Are you ready? And what would you do? Ravan was one. There are several of them. <laughs> I need many Vibhishans. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell us about Lalu Yadav as a railway minister? What do you think of him? You'd really like to know. because he is being taught at harvard and he has balanced several budgets that's my impression anyway what do you think of lallu yadav and what's his legacy on the railways no i was and just please be honest please be honest no that's the only way i have learned that's why the fate is like this now <laughs> i have to go to harvard to understand what he did really <laughs> but in all seriousness there were two aspects first thing the accounting system those who are with the railways understand that railway has no accounting system the corporate accounting system is just not there the pl account is not there which i had again said in my budget that we can't do with this so depreciation can be capitalized and that is what was happening and during mr lalu prasad yadav's time there was no six pay commission so almost 75 to 76000 crores were available to him thirdly you know this tatkal that was another way of increasing the fare by increasing the number of seats for tatkal which the people would not know and increasing the number of days for tatkal after all what was tatkal tatkal was emergency i mean you you can't understand that after 7 days my friend is going to meet with an accident so i better buy tatkal now <laughs> unless you are a astrologer <laughs> so tatkal i said this 7 days nonsense will not do it make it only 24 hours third thing what he did we have a freight system that supposing in a wagon 10 tons are to be loaded instead of 10 tons capacity you have 8 plus 
This is just an example. So you load with 8 and keep the 2. Now that 2, sometimes they load and they don't show. There is some corruption there. So he increased that from 10 plus, uh, 8 plus 1. So increased the load factor. So he got little more revenue out of it. So these were the three, four methods which he did. And uh, that's what I know. Unless he did something which I'm not aware of. But basically this, you know, accounting system. I personally feel minister should not have any discretionary power at all. Even that power to confirm the tickets. And I must tell you and those who are in the railways, I was wondering that, you know, everything is computerized. Then how come we have the touts? And my friends used to tell me that any station, anywhere and I'll give you tickets for 500 rupees. So I was, I went deep into it. I said, where is this coming from? Everything is computerized. You know where it came from? It came from VIP quotas. Honestly. You ask the general manager, ask somebody who is sitting here, is the VIP quota which is not computerized. So w whether that VIP knows about it or not, I don't know. But in his name, somebody is selling the ticket. So I said, curtail the VIP quotas. At least my office should not have any VIP quota. Unless somebody is really serious and somebody wants to go. So to overcome, I must tell you, one of the proposal of this budget was what? That I give a, a train which is a clone train. In other words, if you have, a, let's say, a Busawal Express. And entire train is full in two months. So I have another train following that train. You all call it Bushawal Express number two. So everybody is guaranteed a seat. But for that we required doubling of the lines, we required decongestion of that, but I had started there on certain section. And I must tell you, I, I take this opportunity. We have 65,000 root kilometers, maybe more than a lack of track kilometers. I concentrated by the advice of this expert committee is only on 19,000 track kilometers where 80 percent of the traffic is. So you are just concentrating on this and believe me in five years we could have had a different railway system. You know 20 years back China was 15 years behind Indian railways. 20 years back, not too long back. Today they are 50 years ahead of us. Can we take this lying down? Don't we deserve a better system? I had even spoken to uh, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra that you take the suburban system into Maharashtra. Railways will run. But you decide your fare, you decide what kind of comfort you want, you decide how many ladies special you want because you are running the state, you are aware about your traffic. So I was getting into that model also. That all the suburban, like the Delhi Metro, all the suburban should be a separate entity. And they must decide on their own stuff. I think we would have done wonderful work. Your system today, railway, is outdated, period. You require to redo the entire Indian railways and that is what I was trying to do. With a lot of confidence in five years, we would have been able to increase the speed to 200 kilometers. And we would have had eliminated all the level crossings. We would have had the over bridges, under bridges, everything would have been really on track. And that is why, again, I repeat, and I used to tell much before I was fired, that railway must have a national policy. You cannot have railways run on the whims or fancy of a minister or a political party. You cannot have this. It is too much at stake. And railways can very easily add 2.5% to the GDP. But everybody is keeping quiet. Why? This is not the property of any individual. It is, everything is at stake. We are the stakeholders. We can't afford to keep quiet. That doesn't mean that we are going to go out on the street. 
And I must tell you, the unions were so worked up. They also mentioned they were with, they didn't like what happened. They said, we stop the train, we start with Mumbai. I said, don't do these kind of things. In the longer run, you are going to hurt the interests of the common man. Somebody's mother is not well, somebody has to put the child in the school. All these things don't work in the longer run. It can just pass on a message, but don't do that. I discourage them. But democratically, something has to be done. Now, all your projects of Maharashtra, Mumbai, what's going to happen to them? If there is no money, I can guarantee you, nothing is going to happen to them. All these models are going to lie where they are. But do you deserve that? Aren't you a stakeholder in that? It was not Dinesh Trivedi's property. So somewhere democracy has to work. And we have a lot of system. We have a lot of legal system. We have got parliamentary system. You can talk to your members of parliament. You can haul up the chief minister and say, hey, what's going to happen to our projects? Let him give a guarantee. Somewhere democracy has to work. You cannot leave it to somebody. You cannot elect an MP or a councillor or an MLA and you say that, ab usko paisa banane do. Aisa nahi hota. Iska matlab nahi, aap bhi uske saath paisa banao. <laughs> Take him to task. You joined the Congress UPA government. When you walked in here, you were wearing a saffron scarf. The I saffron was, scarf was given to me by I, someone. I was a little confused when you walked in. No, so somebody uh, gave me the saffron. Yes, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, my question is two parts. One is... Uh, and saffron has our Indian national flag also has that. Yeah. Uh, what was the magic that you, you wove, uh, which made all the bureaucrats toe the line, if I may call it that. Because under Lalu Prasad Yadav, nobody spoke up. Under Mamta Banerjee as railway minister, nobody spoke up. So what is the, the, the charm that you had or the magic that you had that made them go along with your, your thinking? That was the first part. And the second part is, sir, do we ever hope to see you coming back? Back to Mumbai? No, as railway minister. <laughs> no, no, I understand. No, as far as... Uh, See, again, it's a package deal. First of all, my training as my MBA training and you as an individual, where you value people, the biggest source which we call resource are the human beings, not the machines. So all I did was give them respect and dignity and give them confidence that you can come up and we can talk. Board members were communicating me through SMS. They were communicating me through mail. Most of the instructions were passed over mail and they could just walk in any time. So they had the confidence of a teamwork. So when you even play cricket match, unless and the guy who bowls and the guy who hits the ball, if the fielder doesn't catch, then the guy doesn't get the wicket. So it is, I think, the teamwork which they realize. And they also realize that this is a crazy guy. He doesn't have a single agenda of his own. There is no personal agenda. So he is not cut out to be a politician. So they said that he is one of us. And that is the way I think I got the entire team. I used to interact with the unions all the time. And I can tell you there were so many times when there were threats from motormen in Mumbai. I personally spoke to them. I said, look here, I am a pilot and I understand your problems. And today I can tell you it is much difficult to drive a loco than fly a plane. Because these guys are constantly watching for the signal. As far as aeroplane is concerned, everything is automatic. And that is what I wanted to change. That today, if a loco pilot passes the signal, which is red, the train should, the engine should stop automatically. It is time tested. It is not a rocket science anymore. Everywhere in the world, your Delhi Metro runs on that. And to great extent, the Mumbai suburban uh, runs on that. So why can't we have long distance running on that kind of things? It's very, it's not difficult really. So, and the second was whether I come back to the railways. I, I really, I can't say I don't care, but you know, they'll be too arrogant. But I have not thought about it. But 
at the moment what has happened i see the officers i see the unions and I'm it doesn't have to be me it can be anybody as long as you understand what it is and there are no personal political or otherwise agendas then the system is great it can change it can still change here is the person yeah. in this why uh आपका एक ओपिनियन भी चाहिए क्योंकि जिस दिन से आपने रेलवे मिनिस्टर का चेयर होल्ड किया था तब से आप कंसर्न रहे हो कि पैसेंजर को सेफ्टी मिलना ही चाहिए नॉट ए सिंगल पर्सन शुड डाई बट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सिंपली मुंबई विच इज है वन हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव सबर्बन रेलवे स्टेशन डेली सेवेंटी फाइव लेक कॉम्प्यूटर ट्रावेल विच इज द फोर्टी परसेंट ट्राफिक ऑफ द ऑल ओवर इंडिया सर एंड डेली ट्वेंटी फाइव पीपल गेट इंजर इवन टूडे ऑल्सो ट्वेल्व पीपल डाई वेरी सिंपल थिंग we try to approach the railway authorities they uh, insulted us ill treated us i file pl high court for simple ki the person who lived the injured should be provided the hand gloves so the person suffering from the infection hdb sure. the person who is saving his life should not suffer that therefore they refuse i have to go to supreme court for 2 years juta ghis gaya char jodi jhola le leke finally hand gloves ka order aaya देर आफ्टर आई गॉट सो मेनी डायरेक्शन फ्रॉम मुंबई हाई कोर्ट कि एम्बुलेंस बुलाओ स्टेचर रखो नियरेस्ट हॉस्पिटल लेके जाओ फर्स्ट एड दो दे हैव नॉट डन सो फॉर एनीथिंग आई गॉट ऑल आर टी आई चर्च गेट स्टेशन देर इज द एम्बुलेंस देर इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इंटीग्रिटी वॉट आई बिलीव आई एम एस एस सी पास ऑनली बट आई एम द कंसर्न बिकॉज आई हैड एक्सीडेंट ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर्स अगो आई वॉज हिट बाई ट्रेन टू पीपल टू बी हॉस्पिटल सो आई एम सींग द पीपल हु डाय आई एम सींग कि जिससे मेरा जान बचा है वो बेचारा आज मर रहा है तो I file contempt petition. I could issue so-called notice. For example, Church Gate Station, they file. They have ambulance since twenty year. I say, how many time you use? They say not a single time. वो private hospital में use करता है पैसे कमाने को. So there is the problem of integrity. One, two, the railway protection force. I read in the Mahatma Gandhi ji the Gujarati book biography that he experienced that railway officer लोगों को loot लेता है, मार मारता है, पैसे ले लेता है. I experienced myself at the Kurla station. They constituted fake railway court. I file so many complaint. I spend so many money, speed post, fee, cantal ke ordinary five rupees ka post me dalta ho later. Yeah. So I wrote later. They say no complaint is false. I approach high court. Entire fake bail bond scheme is exposed. D G I G. Aapka naam kya hai? Samir Javeri. Samir Javeri se aaya tha. Na Javeri se. I mean people can't see, Please. but he has lost both his so feet. So just guide us. What's both his feet is lost on the on the track, and I totally agree with you. This is a typical case of you are not concerned because it's not your relative. Had it been anybody's relative, then the hell would have fallen loose, and that is what was paining me. That each and every person I thought that is my relation, and that concern unfortunately is missing, and that is why I said it is not acceptable. even the way the tracks we have got all over the dirt that corrodes our toilet system it corrodes the railway track is a safety issue i, I totally agree that the railway protection force has a lot of corruption and they are part and parcel of it so the whole paradigm shift could have taken place was i was just trying to make a beginning somewhere no nope, yeah whatever i can do i'm still certain sir good evening my name is kunika lal and uh, i you know you've told us so many things which a lot of us over here know that the and it all seems very bleak and then to top it after they uh, i don't want to use that word but for want of any other word after they've sacked a nice decent guy who could do so much for the railways now you tell us what is the way forward because there are lots of people who want to make a difference i personally feel that you could have stated the system but i guess you know what what of whatever problems were there because now we every day we see things happening and if you stay in the system i think there's a better way jaise kehte hain ki naali ko saaf karne ke liye uske andar ghusna padta hai bilkul to aap aage kya karna chahte hain because hey. aap jaise log agar hamare desh mein suddenly we realize that we have a you know a kohinoor like you I think we should make full use of it and you should tell us a game plan where we can really go forward and do things. See my actually honest answer is I don't know. Honest answer is that it is like you know you're sitting in a dark room 
and suddenly, you know, a small little light comes. So everybody looks at that light. I'm not trying to say that I'm that light. All I'm trying to say that incidence has shown a light. Like, you know, Gandhiji, if he would not have been thrown out of the, the coach, perhaps there would not have been any freedom movement. One incidence can ignite a lot of passion in people. But that passion has to be taken forward like you rightly said. There is something called Smashan Vairagya. That you go there, you see a dead body and you see what is life, you know. Then again you go come back, again the same fire and then you forget about it. This is reality also. So all those things which is happening with my life today, it is not affecting me in the sense that I also understand, I know. I welcome, I am touched, I am humbled. But I also know that can this last? They will talk like they talk about Suresh Prabhu also. But we don't deserve this. Let us not do it for ourselves. Our lives to aise kar jayegi. But what about our children who are making America, who are making Britain, who are making Germany? They should come back. Today, poor people are taking loan to go abroad, study and stay there. Do we deserve this? Is this the reason why we got freedom? I always question that. So, 10, 15, 20 of us, not only here, everywhere, must sit down and say that what is the way forward? As far as I am concerned, I am still very much in public life. I have not decided to go and just enjoy myself. As long as people want it, I am available. The moment I got invitation from Sucheta Ji, I said, sure, I'll come. I did not even say, Ke nahin, kab, kaise, kyo? and I know these days are very tough, that whatever I say, I have to be very, very careful. <laughs> so can we trust upon you the responsibility of getting like-minded people together? Yeah, we all, you see, we'll have to do it together. We cannot really do it. I can become an example. Because imagination of people have been fired. They realize that, oh my God, there are some such people also there in politics. And there are, believe me, I can tell you, there are quite a few of them. There. Only thing is, they are so much involved with their party bosses. They, I mean, whatever they say, they are, it's... I don't want to use the word, but I'm tempted to use. I will use it. Doesn't matter whatever media may say. Political parties have become cult. <clears throat> it is no longer political parties. It's cult. And anything you talk against the cult leader, you're butchered. Your legs will go without going through the track. You're beaten to death. Is this democracy? What, what's going on? It's just not acceptable. And that is what we have said. We have to live a life of dignity. If we are human beings, then we must understand to give respect and live life of respect. Doesn't matter how rich, how poor, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But our thousands of years of history, when I see Kautilya's Arthashastra, they have taught the world how to govern. Even the kings and the monarchs did not have absolute power. They never had absolute power. At the end of the day, rightly, wrongly, we are not going to get into that debate. When Ram Chandraji was sent to Banvas, if he would not have been sent to Banvas, there would not have been any Ramayan. So this country has always looked at something which was not right. And they have all stood up. Today, why they are standing up with me? Because they feel that something has gone wrong with them. I have become their representative. So the fire is there in the belly. But how to negotiate and how to give that a direction, which I think we have got to come together. Sucheta ji is there. You people are so-called activists. You have got so many hours and days and years of experience behind you. Tell us how to do it. We'll do it together. Individual 
can be part of it. Otherwise, we'll get into the same system. Um, yeah, I really uh, congratulate you for your vision, sir. Because um, in your vision, there is a simple thing. You are running a business. It's, uh, it's not making profits. And uh, you, know, you need money for that. <coughs> and then secondly, you want to grow that business. So you are asking for a fair thing. You are asking for money. But the problem is, I was not shocked when I saw that you, uh, you are asked to resign and all things. Because the politicians who are there, they all, all are there not to serve. The all, they, are, they, are not, they are not present to run the uh, business or run the particular thing for the thing because they are all for money. Your objective was not money. Now my question is that, uh, like the question is this, why were you appointed uh, for this post? Because uh, your qualifications is something different. You are a pilot. You, you could have made the uh, Minister of Aviation Minister. Why this? And why you opted for this? Yeah, Aviation Minister, at least I would not have crashed. No, I think, uh, and this is, and this is publicly known that the first choice was not me. The first choice was the same gentleman who is there today. And I was there again, some destiny somewhere. Uh, but I am also a member of parliament, uh, in case if you didn't know that. So I was part of that system all right. I, <coughs> but but I, I think people like you, the youngsters like you, must take a lot of part in activities in a very nice, uh, democratic, peaceful way. Sir? We will talk, we will talk. Sir, I would like to ask you the question again. So many persons have asked that question to you. I hope Mamtaji is listening to this webcast. She okay. must know the feeling of the people. Suppose she sees the light of the day and invites you back to head the ministry, would you consider it? <laughs> Have you asked her? <laughs> she will feel that I have instigated you to ask this question. <laughs> I, I really have just no answer for that because I am sure it's not going to happen that way. Uh, I, I, I am always willing to do whatever is required to be done. I am not running away from anything. And I do not have that big ego that now I am not going to go back, nothing like that. So whatever circumstances are there, I would accept that, sure. Sir, I have a question. <laughs> sir, I have a question to you, sir. Uh, while uh, everybody admires you for what you have done, I personally feel that there should have been two things that you could have done different. Number one, either you could have stayed on there and done a little bit at least rather than doing nil, either following, you, you chose all or none principle which perhaps is not the right thing to do if you wanted to change because you cannot sometimes change suddenly everything. <coughs> Alternatively, if you chosen not to do that, you should be, you have given the example of Gandhiji who then became a leader then why don't you lead this movement of those who should be doing what they, should, they are not doing today? And you know, we have enough corruption in the country, we have all kinds of things, you have indirectly hinted on Prime Minister's importance and all that stuff. But why don't you do something about it? I mean, it's very nice that you came here and gave this speech. We love it. But I need like, to see an action from you, sir. You have to be leader then, not only give the speech. No, I appreciate your sentiments and I, I also appreciate the spirit behind what you have asked. As far as my staying back, how do you sit in a chair which has been pulled back? There was no chair for me, in the sense that I was asked to go. And I just mentioned if I would have stuck to that, theoretically, then Trinamool Congress would have withdrawn support. Because there is a letter written to the Prime Minister to sack me. That's what I understand. I have not read that letter. This is a presumption. But there was a letter which Pranab Mukherjee mentioned about on the floor of Parliament. And Prime Minister did not want to oblige Mamta Banerjee by sacking me. That was also very clear. So what was the way out? There would have been a stalemate and there would have been elections. So my work would have left halfway done in any case. Right? No, sir. This is... 
What I did was the scaled down version. <laughs> Sir, congratulations. As far as your second uh, thing is concerned, see, Gandhi ji is Mahatma Gandhi, right? And we'll have to take many births to go anywhere near Mahatma Gandhi. And I have no illusion. We can learn, we can follow his footsteps. That I can guarantee you. He has inspired me right from my childhood. And I have taken so much of values from... You have to have a spiritual bent of mind. Spiritual doesn't mean religion. This is the value which every scripture of whichever faith you open and they talk about value. Right? So this is a country which teaches you so much. The leaders and I tell you if I read the names, Jisko bolte na, aapke wrong te khade ho jayenge. Aise neta humare desh mein. So, if we have the base all right, if we have a strong foundation which I believe, India still has a very, very, very strong foundation. What we are going through is aberration. It's not going to last long this way either. I am willing to work with everybody. I don't consider myself so big that I can lead a movement. But yes, I can guarantee you, I would be part of any political, democratic, peaceful movement to achieve an objective for betterment of this country. I'm always there. Sir, my question to you would be... <laughs> Sir, as a passenger and a countryman, I'd like you to enlighten me, not the audience and such, that uh, whenever I travel uh, every month, I almost take the railways for granted. Because if I pay a seat for a second AC and just 2,500 rupees when I travel to Delhi, I almost want everything under the sun to be uh, given to me under that category or that price tag that is put. Please enlighten us on the subsidy that is being given on that seat and that exact amount being, uh, being levied on the freight. And we almost taking it for granted that 2,500, I should get the best in the world. What is it that I do not know? What is the complacency when I play that price tag? Please enlighten us. Complacency in what Complacency. Sense? I mean, I, I take it for granted. 2005, the deal is dull. I mean, I'm reaching Delhi in 2,500. That's it. That's all about it. No, I do not know what goes behind it. Behind it goes 20,000 crore every year we lose in railways. 91% of passengers are the general class. A very small portion, if, even if I increase the ticket value to 300%, I would land up getting maybe 500 crore, 600 crore, not more than that. Unless and until I touch. And the reason I had touched all the classes was there was too much of cross-subsidy between the freight and the fare. So the freight was subsidizing the fare, right? There comes a limit. If you increase the freight beyond that limit, then people will start using the roadways. And it is already happening. So this cross-subsidy will also stop, which I also mentioned in my budget speech, that we cannot depend on this. And the credibility of railway was at stake if I had not touched the fare. Because it's very easy to touch the freight. Nobody understands that. Is that everybody pays as far as the consumer are concerned of product. So that is where I think we had to, it's, I, I appreciate your question, that we have got to make sure the railway is self-sustainable model. And the, the measure of this is the operating ratio. The operating ratio when I took had almost crossed 100. Then it became 97. I wanted to bring it to 84.9. With my proposal, it was achievable. We would have been able to do it. Because I was getting a big chunk from the freight. And I wanted to decongest. It means more freight movement, more revenue. Because there is enough freight to be moved. I wanted to modernize the freight movement also. I wanted to take connectivity to the factories. Let's say Maruti wants to send cars. They are sending by trucks. I would have special coaches, wagons, to take the wagons to Maruti factory. All these were there part of the plans. 
didn't happen. Maybe it'll happen someday. So we would like to look to see forward to have more of you as uh, in the parliament, as a member of the parliament. We'll support you, sir, my from heart. My wife is doing genetics. I'll tell him, tell her to clone some of the next <laughs> Thanks so much. No, actually, very honestly, there are quite a few of them are there. To be honest to my colleagues, quite a few of them are there. All they need is to understand that they are not doing a big favor to the country just by remaining in parliament. They have to come out. The youngsters, I don't know why they are doing it. They have got to come out and there is nothing they will lose. One day, Madhram Dinesh Ji, uh, myself, Naresh Thakur, uh, I'm a volunteer with India Against Corruption. We just spoke about how we can bring change together. To? Together. I have a suggestion for that and I would like your view on that. As a young person, it really pains me when I see the railway station uh, in maybe Bangkok, London. And when I come back here, when I see it, it really pains me. I want that same system here as well. We have the resources, we have the people. I think what is lacking is the will, probably. So, you have done what a selfless leader would have done. Now, I think it's part what people of this country who are the real masters should do. This is what I feel. So, if we start maybe a nationwide movement to reinstate the reformist that we see in you, so that, you know, in future there is no such sacking that happens. So, would you like to give your consent for any such movement? No, I said that any movement which is peaceful, democratic and a Gandhian way of movement, you know, which can be sustainable, I am available. We are not worried about hardship, we are not worried about whatever we go through. I am totally committed to that. But there has to be some kind of a planning. Even when Gandhiji used to go on fasting, he, should plan he was planning much ahead of time. And today's world, we have got a lot of electronic media. We don't want to start something and then that fizzles out. If that happens, then people lose faith in movements. So it's a huge responsibility. Absolutely. But as far as I am concerned, I am totally committed to it. So I must tell you an example when you talk about reform. It's interesting and this I got from Yale University. There was an article written on the day I was sacked. <coughs> Same day, <coughs> one Mr. Bo, I don't know his full name, in China. Mr. Bo was also sacked the same day. <laughs> He's not related to me. But Bo was sacked, you know, for what? He was doing something which was anti-reform. He was going back to 20 years back. He was doing something which was only populist. So he was immediately sacked. And here I was sacked because of doing just the opposite. <laughs> so I do not know what kind of uh, Uparwali ki leela. I don't know. I really do not know. Sir, so I just want to say this, that uh, the fair hike that we are talking about, uh, I have spoken to a lot of people and that's not the issue at all. Safety and all the points that you have bought. When I read the newspaper, I was really happy that after a very long time there is a budget, uh, you know, defense, modernization, everything. We really want this. This is not just your dream, sir. This is our dream. This is my dream. This is nation's dream. And we all want you there. Every time when you are saying in your speech, I could have done that. We met CM, we could have done this. But that didn't happen. It really pains. It pains very much. When so we are ready to go to any level to see you back. The answer is very simple. If you are telling me, then in all seriousness, you insist. Yes, we will insist. This budget which was presented has to be implemented in the okay. same form. And I must share with this August House, I had gone to opposition parties, whether it was Shushma Swaraj, whether it was Mr. Jetli, every political party I had told and I had indicated. As a clause of secrecy, I couldn't have shared the budget with them. Everybody said, Dinesh, increase the fare. Every section of the society, not a single individual came to me and said that you have done something wrong. On the contrary, when I announced the hike of fare, everybody thumped the desk. So you insist, countrywide you insist, the budget is still not passed. Budget is still not passed. What has passed is 
vote on account. Absolutely. Budget is going to be passed now. You insist the 14 lakh union wants it, the board wants it, the country wants it. If one individual doesn't want it, so you have to decide which is important. Is the country important or an individual like Dinesh Trivedi is important? So we want it and we shall get so it. So you have to, it's not an easy task. It is very easily said on this platform. But it takes a lot of planning. I don't want to look like a rebel. I don't want to give an impression that something terribly wrong has happened to me as an individual. No, that is not the truth. But the fact is, if two important committees, the entire board, 14 lakhs of union, across the board in the country, every state has said we want to do it. The test is of democracy. Can democracy be held hostage? That is the test. And it is not up to one individual. One individual could be part and parcel of the movement. It is up to you youngsters. But again, I'll plead, whatever you do it, do it in a nice, peaceful manner. You can start by going to the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. You can start by going to the Prime Minister of India. And you have to ask that, sir, Please tell me the reason why have you done whatever you done. Ask a question. I think the country has a right to know what has happened. It is not Dinesh Srividi, an individual. It is not an employment of a proprietorship. Even, again, if I give examples, people will take it otherwise. You know, I'm a little scared of the media. But even Nathuram Godse was given a chance that these are the charges against you. You know, I, the pain is what you said is democracy. And this is the example that, do we want to call ourselves Banana Republic? New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Economist, everybody is writing articles after articles. They have given up on India, on one incidence. Is this democracy? What are we talking about? I don't want to lose my cool. But this is not acceptable. You forget about me. But the system, what is the system we are talking about? We cannot accept. If you accept today this system, please understand the days, coming days are going to be very bad. This is your example, that people matter. And that is why any movement, a movement like India Against Corruption, people have taken you seriously. Because people were with you. We are fed up of these kind of banana. We cannot, India is a great country. We cannot turn it into a banana republic. At the moment, what is happening, unfortunately, gives the symptoms of a banana republic, which is unfortunate. We have to stand by our oath. And I think I am writing a letter also to the law minister that whenever we take oath, we have got to take the oath not only in the name of Constitution of India, but in the name of India. We have yeah, got to yeah, take yeah, the oath yeah. in the name of India. That whatever we do, we have to first follow what is good for India, then comes our party, then comes the leader, then comes the rest. The problem is, here first comes the leader, then comes the rest. And the leader, if they can't deliver, then the leader is also gone. So we can keep on changing the leader in any case. What we cannot change is our country. We call it Matra Bhumi. We call it Mother India. And we treat Mother India last. I don't understand this. The idea has to be very clear. It's ideas of India. And this is where I felt sorry for the Prime Minister also. This was his time to stand up. If I believed in this budget, I will stand up. If I lose my chair, so be it. It didn't happen. And that is where itna mo kis baat ka hai, Why? For what? You have seen the world, you have been there, done that, everything is there. Why? I, maybe I am too stupid to understand. I don't really know. But why is this? Somebody should come and explain to me what is it? Kya hai is me? If country remains, we all remain. If country doesn't remain and today I was watching the TV, China has got some kind of satellite, they want to put some information system. Our people can't go to Arunachal Pradesh, can you imagine? And we are all keeping quiet, what for? 
I'm not saying that tomorrow you declare a war against China, no. But I think there has to be Indianness, no? Our people are dying every day in Siachen, in borders everywhere. What is there in a chair? And that is what I told Barkha. And people didn't understand. He said, no plan to hai, there is no plan. So no plan is you know. But I appreciate your spirit. Take it forward. Write en masse to the Prime Minister. And insist on a reply. It is democracy. He has to answer what has gone wrong. Either you say the budget was horrible, you appreciate the budget, you appreciate the person, and then you sack the person. For what? I don't understand. So, something needs to be done. If we lose this opportunity, then we'll have to wait for another opportunity to come somewhere down the line. It is always the case. Again, Gandhiji is that opportunity when he was thrown out of the train. He could have compromised, he could have taken it, I have to just do my law here. But he didn't do that. Because this was insult against humanity. He didn't understand whether it was South Africa or India. Human beings are human beings. India is again, I repeat, it's a great country. And if it was not a great country, I would not have received so much of love and affection after giving up the chair. My name is Rajesh Gangar. The way out on this is that the day minister got a notice, I formed a Dinesh Trivedi's fans club. And Dinesh Trivedi fan club has around 2,500 members. If you really want Dinesh Trivedi to show us the way or demand a way from him, join the fans club. No, I, I, if I may interrupt, let's yeah. not have a fan club or something. Mm -hmm. Let's be together in it. Yeah, but let's, you know, form? otherwise what happens that the personality becomes bigger than the cause. Let the cause be bigger than the person. Let's get the budget That's passed. What it is. Let's, let's, That's a better idea. Let's, let's, the idea is get the budget passed if you believe in this budget. Okay. Take a survey. If everybody has written positive about the budget, talk to the Prime Minister. 40 of you, 50, 100, I do not know. Today only you start the campaign and ask the Prime Minister that we would like to know what is the reason. What is the reason this budget is being altered? Yeah. So, under what platform we and should come? And you say, as a Mumbaikar, it is affecting us. Under what platform we should come? Under? That you have to decide. So, that's why I said. Otherwise, I become an interested party. Okay, thank you. Thanks.